Are LiPo or Li-Yon batteries really useless or even dangerous in low temperatures? Selecting the right battery for our project is very important. Today I will focus on which battery works best in low temperatures. Ritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. The lowest temperature around my lab is minus 18 degrees centigrade or 0 degrees Fahrenheit in our fridge. Why do we know it's really minus 18 degrees? Because this is a German fridge and as we all know these guys love precision. If you are interested in the topic batteries for makers you find a playlist on this channel. Today we will test several battery technologies, rechargeable and non-rechargeable. We will compare their behavior at room temperature and at minus 18 degrees. We will check the discharge behavior of all batteries and we will try to charge the rechargeable batteries at minus 18 degrees. We will use small currents, similar to a typical solar-powered Arduino or ESP project. At the end we will know if anything exploded during the tests. The contenders are two different brands of Li-Ion batteries, a LiPo battery, a LiFePo4 battery, an NIMH battery, three lead acid batteries, a standard alkaline battery and a lithium thionyl chloride cell. Let's start with the most common rechargeable batteries. 18650 Li-Ion batteries with a stored energy of around 3.7 volt times 3 amp hours equals 11 watt hours. If you search the internet you get the impression that you can discharge these batteries in cold temperature but you are not allowed to charge them below 0 degrees. But is this true? If we discharge a fully charged 18650 Samsung Lion battery at various current levels, we see these curves. At minus 18 degrees the voltage drop is 13% and at room temperature only 6%. But if we stay below 100 mA there is nearly no difference between the two temperatures. For our project they are usable also in heavy winter situations, at least for discharge. A battery with the Lito Kala brand had a very similar behavior. The next contender is a LiFePo4 battery. Please be aware that this is a smaller one. Here the voltage drop difference is higher. In the area below 100 mA the difference is bigger than the usual Lion batteries but also not significant. LiFePo4 batteries can also be used in very cold weather situations, but they have no advantage over the standard Lion batteries. Now we go to the oldest technology, lead acid. It is used in cars and is well known for its performance also in cold weather. Most of us know the 6 cells 12 volt versions. Here I have a standard battery for motorcycles. It is quite heavy and its stored energy is 12 volt times 4 amp hours equals 48 watt hours, similar to four of these 18650 batteries. This comparison shows why Li-Ion batteries are used everywhere these days. The lead acid battery has also no price advantage compared to a Li-Ion battery pack. For small and light devices, these big batteries are useless. You also have to keep them upright, otherwise they will spill acid. And from time to time you have to refill water. The motorcycle battery maintains its voltage quite well and is also capable of delivering 10 ampere in cold weather. If your charger is a small solar panel, you do not need a particular overcharge protection but you need under voltage protection if there is a chance the voltage drops below 1.75 volt per cell. We can also buy smaller batteries with similar chemistry. They only have two cells and therefore around 4 volts, which fits quite well with our devices. 
They are used in toys and I have two versions here, a small one and a big one. The big one should have a capacity similar to a 18650 Li-Ion battery. The small ones should have a tenth of it. They definitely cost more than a comparable 18650 battery for the same capacity. Their behavior in low temperatures are okay. Do not expect too much current from the small one. If your case is small, you might be happy to use such a square LiPo battery. These batteries behave similar to the Li-Ion batteries. The last of the rechargeable bunch is the AA Nickel Metal Hydride battery. It has a nominal voltage of only 1.2 volts. Also this battery is smaller than the 18650 and definitely cannot be used for high current applications in low temperatures. At 100 mA it can be used with a boost converter to create the 3.3 or 5 volts. Now we go on with non-rechargeable batteries. The first is an AA alkaline battery. This type is not well suited for high currents, but it does not care too much about temperature. You can use these batteries without problems also in cold weather. As the last contender, I have a very special battery, which is made for extremely low and high temperatures. It should work from minus 60 to plus 85 degrees centigrade. But it can only supply a minimal amount of current, 35 milliampere. This is why I test it just up to 100 milliampere. It is definitely not made for high currents. The datasheet says that already at 35 milliampere, its voltage falls below 3 volts. If you want to use this technology for your devices, you definitely need bigger batteries, like this one here, but they are quite expensive. We forgot to answer the most critical question, can we charge our batteries at freezing temperatures? As an engineer, I always try to find similar situations to learn. For Li-Ion batteries in cold temperatures, we have a perfect example. Norway subsidizes e-vehicles and already has a high share of those cars which use Li-Ion batteries. And Norway is a northern country with hard winters. So it must be possible to charge these batteries also in cold temperatures. If you browse through the forums, you find out that e-cars charge at low temperature, but at a lower rate which is not a big issue for our application. We just have to make sure our solar panel is not too big. So let's check a freezing 18650 battery and put it in a 1 ampere charger. No problem, it starts to charge at minus 18 degrees without problems. Also all the other rechargeable batteries. The Samsung datasheet shows that the capacity and maybe also the efficiency is not as high in freezing temperatures. I did not check that. If we want to use this technology for our projects, we have to add a bigger solar panel and higher capacity batteries. This definitely adds cost. Summarized. Fortunately, nothing exploded. I have to admit, I put the Lion batteries in this metal case before I froze them the first time. LiPo and Li-Ion batteries can be used at least down to minus 18 degrees if we do not use high currents. They are the best choice for most applications because of their size and price per capacity. But because they lose capacity and maybe also efficiency, we need bigger batteries and bigger solar panels. If you want to work inside specifications and have enough space, lead acid batteries are the best choice. They do not suffer at all in winter and are known for more than 100 years. And they do not lose as much capacity or efficiency. For very low power devices, alkaline is the best choice. It has no problems with cold weather. LiFePo 4 batteries did not behave differently to the other rechargeable lithium batteries. They have no advantage in winter. Nickel metal hydride batteries are not a good choice. They suffer a lot in cold temperatures 
and price performance is not very good. The only advantage is that they are a direct replacement for alkaline batteries for many applications. Lithium thionyl chloride cells are the best choice for commercial applications where you have to work inside supplier specifications. Pay attention that you buy one which can support the needed peak currents for your usage. Unfortunately, I was not able to test lithium thionite batteries because the supplier was very slow. These batteries seem to be better at low temperature, but their nominal voltage is only 2.3 volts, which makes it challenging to get charging and protection devices. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.